Motrolix. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Ford Authority Podcast, the show where we discuss all things about the Blue Oval on the show today, the 2025 Expedition. I'm your host, G, and joining us today is none other than Ford Authority Executive Editor, Alexander Luft. Hey, G. I'm super stoked to be here for the very first episode, hopefully the first of many. This excitement seems very tangible. It's tangible and it's very appropriate with our, it will go hand in hand with our topic today. Fantastic. (laughs) So there's a lot going on with the new expedition, but, but a little bird tells me you had to go to the grapevine to get all the details instead. Yeah. Yeah. They just, I, I wasn't invited. Please tell me this isn't so. Oh yeah. It's so. They like you a little too much. Yeah, they like me way too much, so they decided not to invite me <laughs> to their <laughs> to their festivities. So the 2025 expedition, it's Ford's calling it all new. I don't know how all new it is, but it does have a new exterior and it does have a new interior. The engines and the the uh, transmission, uh, all that carries over, and you know for the most part the the, the platform as well. There's some tweaks to the chassis, but it's, uh, yeah, it has a, a brand new exterior, a brand new interior, a revised trim level lineup, a bunch of new comfort and convenience features, and uh, better ways, maybe smarter ways would be the better way to put it, smarter ways to use the cargo. So I guess we could start with uh, with the exterior and see where, where the night takes us, huh? Let's do this. The expedition to me, from a, just an exterior design standpoint, it always looked like a like an also ran. I, I'm not going to mince any words about it. To me personally, um, I've always been a fan of the expedition, but just on looks alone, it's always played second fiddle to the likes of Tahoe, Suburban, and Yukon, and potentially now the new Toyota Sequoia as well. Um, so. The new Expedition, the 2025 model, fixes all of that. It doesn't look frumpy at all. It trades in that look. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know if it was frumpy before. It was just forgettable. Maybe that's that's really what I what I want to say. So it it's no longer forgettable. Now it looks much better. It looks good. It looks modern. It looks aggressive, depending on you know the angle. Yes, it's still a full size body and frame. SUV uh, available in you know regular wheelbase expedition and extended wheelbase expedition max flavors. There's a new front fascia with uh, a framed front end and a new flat Ford logo. In some trims, it's no longer a blue oval. It's it's a black oval, which is a pattern that we've been seeing across uh, you know the entire portfolio almost, starting with the F series trucks and now. Uh, the expedition as well. I uh, will tell you what I did find out the hard way, <laughs> and that is that the uh, the fascia was supposed to have been different than uh, the one that we're seeing today. So the the one that we're looking at now, uh, no matter the trim level, it kind of has this like squared in right squared in design. Framed in, I guess you can uh, is, is something that they call it. Well, uh, guess what? It was supposed to be quite a bit different. It actually wasn't supposed to be framed in at all. It was supposed to have been framed out, according to my sources. But a decision was made at some point during the uh, development uh, process to change that and to go with a less uh, costly. Uh, solution, less costly option. So that's what we have here. The big news, uh, I think, is the new split tailgate. Now, Ford Authority uh, was the first to exclusively report on this very feature months ago, before there was any kind of press releases or spy shots. Uh, we reported that there will essentially be a, a you know a tailgate that represents kind of the one quarter, you know, 25% of the the rear end there. And then the remaining 75% or the three quarters will essentially be the lift up, 
you know, uh, uh, lift gate. So that's essentially uh, what this is. Uh, there's uh, quite a few benefits to going with a, a setup like this. And this is not something that's new per se um, uh, in the industry. You know, the BMW X7 uh, has had this. In fact, I have one in my garage. And uh, the Range Rover uh, as well has had the same kind of or similar kind of solution. So this is new to the Expedition. Uh, it, this is something that we also see on the uh, the Lincoln Navigator, the 2025 and newer Lincoln Navigator, which of course is the Expedition's platform mate. So the tailgate, for example, it has enough uh, support in it to be able to withstand 500 pounds. So you know you can have a couple of burly guys sit on that thing, and and it won't it won't cave. Or one extra large life. Uh, woman to sit by herself in the back and you sure. can support her yeah yeah anyone or, or you can have like you know four kids or you know however you know, whatever but you want to break down 500 pounds Who, anyway whoever wants to sit back there and, no and, judgment and, yeah it's fine good i like it yep there's an available meaning optional seat back it's part of the optional cargo tailgate manager which essentially can transform this entire tailgate area into a serving table which is really neat and uh, of course there's power outlets in the cargo area there in the trunk area uh, that are quite helpful if you're doing a cookout or some other kind of a you know tailgating or camping or something else the story about how this came about i actually uh, do have another hard earned story um, that i could share with you about how this entire uh, feature came about in the first place and what I've been told by my sources is that uh, years ago, there was a, an executive, I'm not going to name any names, but there was a Ford Motor Company executive who, uh, whose wife actually was uh, driving a Navigator. And uh, she had gone to uh, the, the wine store and had picked up a few very expensive bottles of wine. And uh, she got home, opened up the... The, the, the tailgate, the, the lift gate, actually. Uh, this is before, obviously, you know, this feature was introduced, the, the split tailgate. And what happened? Well, since the navigator, their driveway was kind of a, at a bit of an angle, oh, no. those bottles came pouring out and dropped and fell and broke. And let's just say it was not a good night for, um, for that person and for their significant other. And so the next day, that person, the, the exec, uh, came into work and said, why in the hell do we not have a solution for this? Forget about nets and cargo nets and you know organizers and all that stuff. Why do we not have a solution? Is there nothing better? Really, is there nothing better? And it turns out that there is. Range Rover has had it for, for like a decade. And uh, the BMW X7 has had it since it came out in 2019, 2018, something like that. 2019, I believe. Uh, 2019 model year. So that's the backstory about how this actually made it into production. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. The rear end, uh, like the, the, the lift gate and the tailgate door, actually finally looks good. It doesn't look plebeian anymore. So it has this really expressive, really you know noticeable black trim, uh, along with a pair of horizontally oriented uh, secondary running tail lights, essentially, or secondary running rear lights. It really complements the look very well of, of this vehicle, and it looks even better if it's a lighter color or a color that you can see that black contrast on. Uh, it looks it looks great. And then there is another feature which is. Um, the open on approach. So if your hands are full, you know, uh, before what you would do is you would kick, right? You'd have the key fob on you and you would kick under the under the the trunk essentially and you know, voila, the the uh, the rear door, the hatch would open. Don't need to do that anymore. Uh, open on approach essentially automatically opens the, uh, the, the 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 rear door whenever it senses that there's a person there with the key fob and they're there for in that zone for more than a few uh, seconds, there's a time delay on it. So no more kicking. You don't need to kick your car anymore. <laughs> 
And uh, what else is there? Uh, a couple of other things I noticed that are interesting is that the uh, comms antenna on the roof, it's been offset to it. So it's at the rear and it's been offset to the side, to the passenger side of the vehicle. I'm sure there is a, a reason here and it's probably related to towing uh, and or roof rack um, uh, usability. And uh, what else is there? There's uh, an available exterior zone lighting feature, which uh, essentially creates four lighting zones that uh, surround the exterior. And um, you can choose from the inside the, the, uh, the expedition, you could choose which zone you want to light up, meaning the front, the rear, or either one of the sides, or all of them. So that's the, uh, the exterior. I think it really looks quite a bit better. Uh, than it did before. And I, I think now Ford has finally solved the, the thing that, in my opinion, was always something that held the expedition back, which is the design. It just, and it never, it never stood out. Now they got it a good stands contender. out. Yeah, it's a good contender. Very nice. Would you like to talk about the, uh, the interior a bit? What's going on here? Are they getting the same upgrades as everybody else with these bigger screens and bigger all that stuff? Bigger screens. More. Tell me about the screens. I want to know about the screens. 24-inch screen. Ooh. 24. It's the same size as the wheel, as the available wheel, by the way. Um, now you can get 24s on the Expedition, uh, which is a uh, kind of a big deal, right? It's a huge freaking <laughs> it's a huge wheel. wheel. Huge wheel. Yeah. Across That's town. A massive wheel. Yeah. It's huge. You don't, you know, this is something that you would have to go to the, to aftermarket, you know, before to get. Now you can get it straight from the factory. Is that even aftermarket? Like you have to have like specific. Companies. You'd have to cut the wheel well. You'd have to do all kinds of cutting, trimming, sanding, buffing, whatever. No, not anymore. Not anymore. Now you have to do that for the twenty sixes. Just give <laughs> just, up. At it that never, point, it just never ends. It just never stops. ends. It's just, just no. <laughs> it will also never end for the displays. So 24 inch display that is positioned above the dash. So like a lot of uh, uh, new vehicles today, the 25 Expedition has this kind of dual tier, two tier uh, display configuration where you have one display that's far away from the driver, kind of almost at the base of the windshield, and then another one that's closer. So in the case of the Expedition, it's the 24 inch display that is kind of kind of spans where the gauge cluster uh, to the end of the center stack screen where that kind of that space it spans that area and then there is another smaller screen uh, where the traditional center stack screen uh, would typically reside so the setup is is quite uh, interesting and it's not a not a coast to coast display like the Navigator has, which is you know it's essentially pillar to pillar almost. Uh, in this case, the uh, the bigger display, the twenty four inch display, is smaller. Nevertheless, it still does quite a bit. It does does a lot of things quite well. Uh, it seems like, uh, for instance, um, you know one of the things that it does the positioning just from the the basic positioning element, uh, positioning it all the way at the bottom of the windshield really enables the driver to look ahead at the road and also keep that display in their field of view, which is very nice. And they can do this, the driver can do this, not by looking through the steering wheel, but over the steering wheel. And to do this, Ford had to overhaul the steering wheel. So now it's this, I'm not quite sure how to call it. Um, it's an oval. Yeah, it's no longer a perfect circle. No. It's an it's an oval like thing. So it's like a flat bottom, you know, like you'd have flat bottom steering wheels in in, you know, sports cars, race cars, what have you. Now this is a flat top and kind of sort of a flat bottom as well. It's like squished. If someone took a typical steering wheel and they just deek, that's what happened here. Doesn't look bad though. I don't know. Does it? I just I think it not? It, I think it flows. I mean, it's weird what they did with the dashboard, and mm -hmm. I say weird in, in the best way possible because you opened up an enormous amount of space. You reposition screens that make perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Put them down the line. I don't want to chase screens when I'm looking down. The screens that I do need to interact with, 
they're close. Yeah. It yeah. makes sense. But it's that steering wheel. It's different. Man. It's very different. It is. It's weird. But it will take some time for me to get used to this. I, the one thing that I have to say about the wheel, and this is probably going to be a very divisive topic, as most things are these days, <laughs> it seems. But th- this is an expedition. Okay. This is not a Ford Fiesta. All right. This is not a Ford Focus, a Ford Escape, or some other, you know, fun cute cozy little car this is the expedition and now with the exterior appearance that this overhaul delivers you essentially have this very burly manly you know masculine aggressive design and then you climb inside and you got this little wheel you got the little wheel. it just doesn't to me it doesn't work the, the the exterior is beautiful the interior is good but the two do not correspond to one another that's that's my take. It's an approach on personality. You get one personality outside, right. one personality inside. Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde type of thing. Kind of, you mm. know, in its own unique little way. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, there's you know uh, the, the infotainment system itself. It's uh, designed to prioritize the use of voice. So you know, Google Assistant is there. It's built in. Alexa is also built in uh, as an alternative uh, for in-vehicle controls. So you can do things like set in vehicle temperature, search for information, request uh, you know specific stations, satellite radio stations, broadcast stations, find destination, what have you. You can do that uh, via voice, and of course you know all the other tech features. Uh, the modern tech features are here. So you know forward connectivity um, for, with with Wi-Fi hotspot and embedded Google Maps functionality. There's Blue Cruise, which uh, is of course Ford's hands-free driving assistant that is now available on, uh, according to Ford, almost 90% of all Expedition models. So Platinum, King Ranch, and Tremor, as well as Active, all of these are equipped with the Blue Cruise hardware, thereby making them uh, compatible uh, with Blue Cruise. And I should note that the Blue Cruise that's in the Expedition, it is an improved version of Blue Cruise, uh, which delivers a smoother and more natural drive. And it also increases the average amount of time that owners can spend in hands-free mode. And uh, then really beyond that, there's you know lane change assist uh, as part of Blue Cruise that allows a driver to switch lanes hands-free with just by tapping the uh, turn signal uh, stock. Uh, of course, it does that when the path is available and clear. And there's also in-lane repositioning, which uh, helps to provide more space by just kind of gently, subtly shifting away from vehicles in neighboring lanes. So that's the tech, but there is one more thing that I should note about the tech, which is the digital device holder. So, you know, you know, you, you got a litter of kids, right? What are they doing in the car? When they're not fighting? Yes. Well. <laughs> they're all on iPads, right? Well, they're supposed to be. Supposed to be. But this this is different. This, this is different. Has a, it has a specific yep. little little holder Yep. so that they can't put it in their lap and argue. They can't sit there and, like, yank it out of the other one. The headphones get lost. Mm-hmm. This is specifically to keep the peace. In yes. the back seat, and I like it. Like and, you were, and the comfort. Well, no, no, you were saying like, oh, like you know, it does this. You just you know you you, you know it changes lanes automatically, and I'm I'm just staring at this digital device holder. So it's it's mounted to the back of the first row headrests. So this is only for essentially the the middle row, um, and it's yeah, it, it essentially clamps firmly. Ford makes it a point to state that it clamps firmly around nearly any digital device from standard smartphones to oversized tablets this is what they do for the parents thank you yeah i like it i used to have an expedition growing up as a kid looks like there's another one in your future the bubble this this is the this is the one thing that sold me the digital device holder it needs to come (laughs) to make its way to the third row also oh they did that that's it just take my money now take it Take it. Throw some headphones in there. Yeah. Gone. Sold. Take my money. Just 
take my money. I agree. Keep these kids quiet. Mm -hmm. And just, I'll I'll hold on to that funny little steering wheel. You wouldn't mind. I wouldn't, not at all. You wouldn't mind at that point. As long as they have silence. (laughs) (laughs) Let's talk about cargo. So, you like hauling long objects? That's a little hobby of mine, but yeah. <laughs> so things like skis, right? Fishing rods, uh, other long items, lumber. Anyways, uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's called lumber, but yeah. it doesn't have to be called lumber. <laughs> no, it can it can be anything. Okay. It can be anything. We don't judge on the Ford Authority podcast. No judge. The, <laughs> we um, <laughs> geez. So here's the thing with this 2025 expedition um, there is a new type of flexible third row seating so it's a 40 20 40 split on the third row meaning that the 20 is in the middle and it can fold down that 20 which enables someone to just load a very long piece of lumber or skis or hockey sticks or hockey sticks or anything Maybe you got a long telescope that you're loading back there. I don't know. Whatever it is that you're loading back there, you can just f- f- put it right straight down the middle along the center aisle, and that space runs from the split gate all the way, it's clear, no obstacles, to the front center console. And this works with you know, the, the regular bench seat in the second row, which is also a 40 20 40 uh, split. And it naturally works also with the captain's chairs in the second row, which automatically have that, you know, that, that split down the middle as well. So this is a genius idea. I don't know how or why we're only now getting to this right now, but this is, this is, you know, it takes utility to a whole new level. It's a smart layout. Mm-hmm. Very smart. Yep. Because you're maximizing that space, you're maximizing what you can even use this. And for. you're still you're still be, you're still able to seat six passengers comfortably, comfortably. So you got the two in the front, two in the middle, two in the third row, and right in you know it's essentially the armrest for the second and third row becomes whatever you know lumber you're hauling. Back I like there. the versatility. Yeah. It's coming in. It's coming in hot. It's coming in good. It's good. It's 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 so far so good, right? Let's get to the good stuff, though. Let me give you one more thing. Okay. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna talk to you about the flex powered console. Ooh, I almost missed that. So, with the press of a button, the driver can easily slide this new console back almost eight inches. And what that does is two things. First, it opens a secure storage place in the front at the bottom of that center console that that essentially ended up sliding back so you can store purses valuables right and then beyond that this also moves that center console closer to the second row occupants which means that they now have easier access to audio controls climate controls and the cup holders that are also uh, present on that center console so this is great they went through all these little like details, thought about it, yeah, laid it out nice. The way Ford does these things is they, their their process over the past I don't know maybe ten years or so, maybe it's a bit newer than that, but give or take a decade. Uh, actually, I will tell you exactly when it started. It started with the F one fifty, the fourteenth gen F one fifty. So that was 2020, 2021. So only about five years now, give or take. What they do is they go in and they speak to owners. They spend time with owners. They observe, they see how the vehicles are being used in the real world by real owners, not actors. And that's essentially how they they, they hone in on and and zero in on these improvements. It's a good strategy, it's a solid strategy. These are very, very, very welcomed, specifically from a family standpoint, if you have kids. yep. These features go a very, very, very far away, and they're stacking them. They're stacking them. Now, something for the daddies. All right. You want to talk about drivetrain, don't you? I want to talk about drivetrain, man. What are we getting here? EcoBoost 6 V6. So it's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 across the board, but it is available now in in two outputs. 
The standard output is 400 horsepower, 480 pound-feet of torque. Not bad. Not bad at all. So this is now, again, the standard. Um, this, I should note, in the outgoing expedition, this was the, mid, the mid-level output that was essentially used on Limited, King Ranch, and Platinum. And uh, the, the base trims prior, again, on, on the last-gen model, the XL, XLT, STX, I believe, all of those got 380 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So now you're getting more power and more torque, and it's standard. And then, and then, you have the high-output version, the HO. The high output version gets you 40 horsepower more, so that's 440 horsepower now, and it gets you 30 pound feet of torque more in terms of torque, so 510 horsepower now, and that's standard on the Tremor, which we will get to in a second, and the uh, it's available on the Platinum. So, very very healthy numbers. These are you know if you're looking across town at the competition. Uh, the Suburban Tahoe Yukon, you know, with the 6.2 L87 V8, naturally aspirated, yes, small block, yes, but 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. This is now more on the high output side. It's more across, you know, more more power and more torque. And it doesn't sound all that bad either that, you know, the 3.5 EcoBoost V6 sounds pretty good. It's very, very nice. Mm-hmm. It's a good engine. All right, and then uh, let's talk about that tremor, shall we? Since you're please, yeah, you really, you really want to talk about the tremor, don't you? Well, just all these things you can do now. You know, before it was just like you know the Disney World vehicle, to cram everybody in there. People were coming in, take the expedition down. You can load luggage. Mm-hmm. Those days are long gone. Yeah, well, they started. They started with the Timberline uh, for the refresh, uh, the last gen's refresh for 2022. I want to say, I think it was 2022 model year. So the Timberline was not a success. Let's put it that way. Uh, my sources tell me that almost nobody wanted one and they needed to really over overhaul the package, rethink the package of what an off-road oriented expedition uh, looks like. And, uh, and rethink they did because now Timberline's gone. This is now Tremor. And uh, Ford says that the Tremor, uh, that the Expedition Tremor was made for adventures that venture far off the beaten path. Now, we reported at FordAuthority.com some time ago, I think it was over a year ago, that uh, Ford was considering an Expedition Raptor. And uh, the Raptor didn't happen, but what happened was a much better uh, Timberline, which again, they're calling Tremor. So this, you know, really joins the, the Tremor, uh, family, which is available, started on the Super Duty. Then it made its way to the F-150. Then it made its way to the Ranger. And then of course the Maverick. And now here we are, uh, the, uh, Tremor. And I have it on good authority that, um, the 2025, Explorer will also get a Tremor uh, series at some point here soon. So what does the Expedition Tremor get you? 10.6 inches of ground clearance. We can start there. That's more than any other vehicle in its class. It rides on a set of 33-inch General Grabber all-terrain tires. It uses the high-output version of the 3.5 EcoBoost V6 that we just discussed. It has a retuned suspension, electric power-assisted steering systems, uh, Raptor-inspired running boards and front skid plate. There's that Raptor connection there. Embedded off-road auxiliary lights just behind the grille. Underbody protection for the front axle, the transfer case, and the fuel tank. And it also has a drive, a drive mode system that includes rock crawl mode and a trail control system that includes trail turn assist and one pedal trail driving so this thing is no slouch when it comes to you know off-roading i don't know if you know going off-roading is the best thing to do in a full-size big old long uh expedition you know and this is only available by the way on the regular length model not on the extended length 
uh, Expedition Max, which was also the case for the uh, uh, the Expedition uh, uh, Timberline before the, the overhaul. But nevertheless, I don't think it's you know anyone's going to be doing any kind of serious off roading. But if you want to get to a trailhead and you know you can you can do it and a lot more. I mean, if you're looking for camping sites that are just a little bit outside of the beaten path, mm -hmm. this may be a good option for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And if you're going to those camping sites, you probably might be uh, towing something. Hopefully. Yeah. So the new expedition can tow up to 7,000 pounds uh, without the need for a load leveling bar and 9,600 pounds of max towing with a weight distributing hitch. That's very impressive. That's impressive. That's more than the Tahoe, the Suburban, and the Yukon thus far. And then there is all kinds of technology that makes towing easier. You know, there's uh, Pro Trailer Hitch Assist, which, you know, essentially takes the frustration out of hitching up a trailer. There is uh, Pro Trailer Backup Assist, which allows the camera to track the, the trailer position. Uh, while the driver backs up and, and guides the trailer, there's a whole bunch you know of cameras and, and convenience features for towing. And I think that brings me to the lineup. Uh, so the lineup, it still it consists of the regular wheelbase and the long wheelbase Expedition Max, but the trim level uh, hierarchy has been overhauled. So prior to this 2025 model year redesign, uh, Ford offered the Expedition in XL, STX, XLT, Timberline, King Ranch, and Platinum trims. Now, the XL, STX, and XLT essentially are being consolidated into one uh, trim level called Active, which is something that Ford has been doing across its almost entire utility vehicle portfolio, uh, including uh, the Escape, the Explorer, and now the Expedition. So active is the base, then there's platinum, there's King Ranch, and Tremor. So that's the model line. And uh, from a timing and uh, launch standpoint, ordering for the 2025 Expedition will open up on the 24th of October. And uh, Ford says that the, uh, the, the first units should begin to arrive in dealer showrooms in the spring of 2025. So that's that's the expedition right there. 2025, new, refreshed. Any thoughts? Well, I don't want, know what to call it. I don't know if it's new or refreshed. It's just new. We can call it new. All right. I mean, it's a carryover platform. So how new is it? But there are there have been vehicles that have you know they they've done carryover platforms on and they've we've called them all new so okay we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that it's all new it's new to the market with like this new composition it is yeah my my whole thing on this on this vehicle is this finally <laughs> finally i can't stress this enough finally an expedition that doesn't look dated and it doesn't look stale 100 percent at launch 100 percent. it looks this thing they, they did such a good job on the design the front end could have been better by the way remember my sources told me that the front end was to die for when they had it in studio yeah this is not to die for it's not to die for but it's much better than the current yeah. one much better because the current one is like forgettable the current one it doesn't look bad it, it's not offensive it's not a pontiac Aztec, right but it's just if you're spending this, these these are not expen these are not cheap. These are expensive. <laughs> these are not cheap vehicles. You know, if you if you load one up, you're looking at close to you know eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars. You want something that looks good, that maybe doesn't need to jump out uh, from you know from within the crowd, right? And say, hey, look at me, look at me. I'm a Range Rover, and I'm a you know bouncing Mercedes Benz GLS class or whatever. No, maybe that's not what you want. But you do want something that makes you. You know, after you park it, makes you do a double take as you're walking away from it into the bank. They had that for a very long time. It, it had that feeling of that the expedition would just get the hand me downs mm -hmm. from the older brothers. Yep. And yeah, they weren't bad. Or from Lincoln. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. But it bad. wasn't good. It just wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was all right. And this is much better than all right, just in design alone. So that that's that that to me is they they've got the. You know, 
they've got the formula down here. Finally, they fixed the design problem. It's not forgettable anymore. And I should note that this space, it is very, very important to Ford. This is a space that is second to the F series for Ford as far as profit. The opportunity in this segment, this body and frame full size SUV space. So you have the, the Expedition, Tahoe Suburban, Yukons, the Toyota Sequoia, Nissan Armada. And now you have the Jeep Wagoneer. That's it. That's the whole segment right there. But the amount of sales in this space is very healthy. The segment is growing also very healthy. And the profit margin, it's good. It's good. So Ford, for the past few years, ever since GM launched the uh, current generation full-size SUV, so that, you know, the Tahoe Suburban Yukon, Yukon XL, Ford has been pushed down by, uh, really Tahoe and Suburban have always been number one by volume. But the Yukon, it's always gone Tahoe Suburban first, Expedition second, Yukon third. Ever since the 2021 model year Yukon, what's happened was Expedition sank to third in terms of sales rankings. So Tahoe Suburban far and away, the sales leaders, then Yukon, Yukon XL, and then only then the Expedition. And that's not a good place to be. I mean, they're still making money. They're still healthy, but they're getting, they, they were getting outcompeted. That, that's really it. They were, that, that's the best way to put it, I think. And so this is a much better vehicle to go to war in this space. This is a, this is a much better effort, much more attractive exterior, much better interior. Don't know about that steering wheel yet. We'll see. But a lot better technology, a lot better usability, a lot better cargo unique tailgate no one else has this in the segment right now not even the gm uh twins or i call them twins but they're not really twins anymore the gm offerings not even jeep which to this uh, up until this point had the newest vehicle in this space and this is a hot space you know uh chevy and and gmc they just refreshed and they will soon launch the refreshed uh 2025 model year tahoe suburban yukons so ford finally no longer brought a, 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 a knife to a gunfight. They, they brought a real gun. Looks like it. I'm excited to see what um, <clears throat> how the market reacts to this one. Yeah. Because it's, it's a very good offering. You've got mm -hmm. plenty of features. you got plenty of personality types you can yeah. pick from within the lineup. Hey, so. maybe they can send us one to, to drive. It'd be nice. You know, or just invite us to a, to a reveal event once in a while. Who knows? I just want to see the whole iPad holder in the back seat. I that's all. That's all you want. Shove the little kids back there. <laughs> I want to take them out. Thirty minutes. If I'm coming back and I'm not ripping my hair out, I'll be okay. Good. Did you hear that, Ford? Let's make this happen. Anyways, thank you all for joining us on this inaugural episode of the Ford Authority Podcast. You can find this show on the Metrolix Network YouTube channel and by going to FordAuthority.com and clicking on Podcast. And remember, please. Hit that like button and give us a follow to stay up to date on the latest Ford news. We're currently working on getting this show into your favorite podcatchers. So if you don't see it in a podcatcher app yet, just give us a few days and we'll get that taken care of. Stay tuned next week for episode two of the Ford Authority podcast. And don't forget to visit FordAuthority.com for the latest Ford news. Motrolics. FordAuthority.com is an independent enthusiast website and podcast and is not affiliated with, sponsored by, or otherwise associated with the Ford Motor Company.